well, well, I thought I might just share uh, the story of how uh, one nonprofit organization was founded, because I think it's an example of how uh, service opportunities sometimes just happen to you. Um, Wendy Kopp, the founder of Teach for America, is probably the very finest example of um, planning a service opportunity when you're still in college. And DonorsChoose.org is, I think, an example of one of many of nonprofit organizations that just kind of happen. Um, so I was a, a social studies teacher, as Kate mentioned, uh, in the Bronx for five years. And uh, during my first year of teaching, I found my colleagues and I always having the same conversation in the teacher's lunchroom over and over again about books that we wanted our students to read, about art supplies that we needed to do an art project. We would talk about a field trip that we knew was really going to bring the subject matter to life. But none of these ideas would go beyond the teacher's lunchroom because there was no way for us to access funds in a straightforward manner. And um, we, we would spend our own money on copy paper and pencils, really basic stuff for our students. But for the most part, we saw our kids going without the materials and experiences they needed for a great education. And we teachers had a tough time innovating because we'd, we'd come up with these ideas, but then not have a way to bring them to life. So while my colleagues and I were kind of griping about that state of affairs, I, I figured that there were um, people out there from all walks of life who must want to uh, help improve our public schools. But we're getting uh, more and more skeptical about writing a $50 check to a big institution and feeling like their gift was going off into a, a hole. So um, I, uh, I, my colleagues and I in the lunchroom came up with this idea for kind of a philanthropic eBay where public school teachers could post classroom project requests uh, and donors could come and choose the project they wanted to support and really see where their money was going and hear back in a vivid way from the classroom they chose to help. So um, this uh, Polish programmer uh, uh, cost $2,000 to, to program version 1.0 of our, of our website, really rudimentary, and uh, my mom made dessert for my colleagues, and I put my mom's dessert in the teacher's lunchroom and said, all right, whoever eats this dessert has to go to this newly created website and, and ask for whatever it is you most want for your students, whatever project it is you most want to do. And uh, the free food is like the currency in public schools. <laughs> <laughs> and, and probably elsewhere as well. Um, and the, the health teacher, uh, she was the, the first uh, colleague of mine to eat my mom's dessert. And she wanted to do uh, a pregnancy uh, prevention project for which she needed uh, baby think it over dolls, which are uh, life size, life weight dolls that cry at 3 in the morning and need to be fed and show a teenager what it would be like if they had a kid. So that, that was the very first project request on our site was for Baby Think It Over Dolls. And, uh, the art teacher, she ate my mom's dessert and she put up a request for um, the fabric and thread and needles that she needed for her students to create a, a massive 20 foot by 30 foot quilt with every student doing a square of it. And the English teacher, he ate the dessert and he wanted to prepare his students for the SAT. And so the third project request on this website was for a class set of SAT review books. So a lot of my colleagues ate, ate the dessert, put up the first project requests, and I didn't know uh, any donors to come <laughs> give to these project requests. So I, uh, I anonymously funded my colleagues' requests to see them. Which, which, lest you think that I was generous, I was able to do that because I was uh, still living at home with my parents and I didn't have to um, spend any of my teacher's salary on rent, so I was able to spare a little bit of it to fund my colleagues' requests. Which, because I did so anonymously, gave my colleagues this misimpression that the website actually worked. <laughs> all these people out there waiting to make teachers' dreams come to life. Um, when that was not the case, and there really were not any donors at all. Uh, but, but so rumor spread across the Bronx that there was this website where teachers could go and, and finally get that classroom library that they always wanted and finally be able to take their students on that field trip and, and bring their classroom dreams uh, to life. And so we started getting uh, flooded with project requests being posted on our site. And I, I really didn't know where to turn for um, donors, but my students uh, they saw the potential of this website and they volunteered their time. Um, they, they volunteered after school every day for about four months and they hand wrote one by one uh, letters. They, they put together 2,000 letters 
to people all across the country, telling them about this place where, uh, with five dollars, someone could actually be a philanthropist and, and pick a project uh, and, and get photos and thank you letters from the classroom. And uh, we, we, we did use the Yale Alumni Directory to get the addresses for those <laughs> which technically is not allowed. But uh, what's prohibited is a, me is a mechanical reproduction of that alumni directory. So if you're handwriting the address, it's a manual reproduction. That was going to be our defense if we were uh, taking the test. Uh, but so my students, uh, the, the letters that my students wrote uh, to, to alumni generated the first $30,000 and donations to classroom project requests on our site, and, uh, and we were off to the races. Um, for a few years, we operated out of my classroom, uh, and my students were our staff members, and um, maybe I'll just, just for purposes of uh, bringing it uh, to a quick conclusion, I'll just fast forward to today, where um, one in four public schools in America uh, has at least one teacher who's posted a project request uh, on our site, and uh, in just a few months since uh, Kate captured those statistics. Uh, we we uh, crossed the, the two million. I'm sorry, the, the two million student milestones. So there are two million kids in public schools, uh, almost all of them from low-income families, who've gotten books, art supplies, field trips, uh, and the like through our site. Um, Princeton Project 55 and its fellows has played a, a central role uh, in our. Um, growing from a, a little experiment in, in citizen philanthropy or, or marketplace philanthropy uh, in, a, in a classroom in the Bronx to, um, to an organization which has touched two million kids. Um, and I'll, in, the, in the theme of just telling a couple stories, I'll, uh, I'll give you two stories of what Princeton Project 55 fellows are up to and, and how they've been responsible for our success. So um, one, uh, fellow who's now embarking on her fourth year at Donors Choose the Workshop at West Kittle. So I guess she was the class of 05, 06? Oh, six? Yeah. Yeah. Do, do, do you know her? Yeah, sure. Oh, awesome. Um, <laughs> so uh, so, so uh, Stephen Colbert just joined our, our board of directors, along with Bill Bradley, one of your uh, fellow Princetonians. And uh, Stephen Colbert is shooting his uh, show from Iraq uh, in just a few weeks at the invitation of General Petraeus. And Stephen Colbert wanted to do something to support our troops but in a really inventive way. So for on three shows now over the last couple weeks, he's called on all of his viewers to support our troops serving in Iraq and Afghanistan by supporting their children's education. There, there are a, a number, there, there are a lot of um, public schools on military bases whose teachers have been putting up project requests on our site for materials that really relate to military kids, whether that's a teacher who wants a classroom library about books uh, with books that focus on uh, moving from place to place, um, or whether it's a teacher who wants a flip video camera so her students can capture what they're learning and send that video to their dad or their mom serving in Iraq or Afghanistan. There are a lot of teachers putting up these requests, and so Stephen Colbert has um, set up a, a contest on our website to see whether, um, to see which branch of the armed service uh, has veterans and loyalists who can make more donations to projects uh, for military children. So um, you can donate to one of these projects for military kids in honor of the Army or the Navy or the Air Force or the Marines. The Coast Guard uh, petitioned us to, to be included and Stephen Colbert made a joke about it. Now the Coast Guard, loyalists of the Coast Guard are dead set on showing that they can do more good for kids in military serving public schools than, than the loyalists of any other branch. So anyway, so, so what Charlotte Weisskittle is doing is uh, this Princeton Project 55 fellow is, is really the person who's responsible for um, uh, outreach to all of the military serving public schools in the United States. And, and it's thanks to Charlotte, this Project 55 fellow, that uh, there are now hundreds of teachers at military serving public schools who are responding to Stephen Colbert's call to action. 